Railroad Preserver 2000 here, back again doing another video here in Winterville, Georgia. Currently, I'm in, uh, or standing on the old Georgia Railroad right of way. Currently, I'm facing towards Athens. As you can see by the old mile post sign here, that they were kind enough to leave by the rail bed. Mile post 3-2, 32, either to Athens or Atlanta. I think now I think I may have found one of these on the old right of way further up towards Maxis, but I'm not very sure of it. But anyway, behind the mile marker you have here the Winterville Railroad Depot. This is a depot I've already known about for a few years, but I'm gonna try and get a good decent picture of it real quick while I have the chance before the traffic builds up. So one, two, three. So this portion here was the passenger waiting area, the part where the sliding door was the freight warehouse, and there's a car blocking the view, so hold up. There we are. So, crossing what would have been the main crossing for the railroad here. There would have probably been at least two tracks, the main line siding and the platform siding. In fact, right here may have been where the platform was, where I'm standing. But here's where the telegraph window was. In fact, here's the evidence of the former railroad owner right there. I never noticed that until now. Office Georgia Railroad. Let me get a picture of that. First time I think I've ever seen that. And then the freight dock was right here and there's the sliding door for it. Although it's gone, there's, there would have been a desk right there built into the wall and you would have had the telegraph and all of its equipment here, there along with similar for signal controls. And up here is an old switch stand, probably from the railroad being here, probably not, who knows. But I'm going to get a picture of it, so... Cam video is going to go sideways, so don't worry about it. I'm filming in the right way. I'm just getting the picture. So, one, two, three. And it's a Bethlehem Steel tall mast switch. <laughs> Our new general adjustable Bethlehem Steel. Patent number is 866-1997. It was built in 1945. Let's see, does it work? Oh, yes it does. Only thing it's missing are the locks, but I just switched it to where it shows the white flags as opposed to the uh, red. So, one, two, three. And then here was the freight warehouse. The depot is now used as an event space. And of course it's locked since they're not having any events, but... Oh, well, the freight door no longer moves either. But they've got a cart down here, along with a old derail sign. Now, I don't know if that was found near the right-of-way or not, but it could have been very well been. Interesting thing, some friends of mine in Rails Unlimited were actually able to model one of the depots I've photographed recently. It was one I photographed up in Gray, Georgia back in 2018. They were kind of able to model it and put it into a new town they're planning to add into the game later. It's not the one I drew. I drew plans for a town that's a fictional town to represent Georgia, but that's going to come much, much later in the future when more time is allowed. Now, I actually did film myself walking this right-of-way well before they even started building the trail. And, uh, yeah. It's interesting to see it now as it looks today, but funny thing, I did find a remnant of this rail line from when the tracks were still here up in uh, Crawford. Either Lexington or Crawford, I can't remember the town, but 
I walked where the tracks used to be and found a spike that had been ripped out, ripped out of the tracks. It was bent, like a crowbar had been used to rip it up, and as a result, it got bent from the force. But I kept it and asked if I could, the curator or the owners of the depot there, which are the Chamber of Commerce, if they'd be interested in keep getting the spike for a display, and they said yes, that they would take it. But I want to try and give it to them in person as opposed to just leaving it. So I'm going to get another picture since the light's shining on the depot. So one, two, three. And again. probably one of the better shots of the depot I've been able to get. Alright. I'm going to be getting more pictures around here. Here's the... Hmm? Yeah, I do. So here's the crawl space, or what the crawl space they added. You can see where they added cinder block underneath, but... You can see the original brickwork that the depot sits on there and there. And there would have been another one up further up there that they must have removed. There's a dog watering station, which is nice. And now here is the other side of the loading dock, which means there would have either been two tracks or a small yard in this general area around the depot. So you would have had the mainline track and depot siding there and then you may have had a few other sidings here with maybe water or sanding where you'd replenish coal or water and or drop small cars off for local industries and they would have unloaded or loaded right here so they would have gotten inbound stuff from other towns along the tracks further up the tracks here or they would have got it from up in here I don't know but every railroad depot I've ever photographed in Georgia and elsewhere nearby has always had the freight doors on both sides of the depot, track side and non-track side. But yet, if you look over here, here's the better area view of the passenger waiting area. As you can see, let me get a better picture across the way here from this park. Now the lighting is not going to be the best, so please don't complain to me about it. And also here's another switch stand, one of two that are at the edges of this park. Now these were probably original to the depot, no doubt. They were probably here when they tore the tracks up. So, one, two, three. And again, don't worry about the bank. I'll be getting to it soon enough. across the way here. If I can get a picture of where they've got the train schedule and all that. Because currently I'm actually trying to find, look through my photography where I photographed all the railroad depots over the years. Found one that I could use for the town model. Winterville was one of the ones I was thinking of. So one, two, three. I'll make sure I don't get hit trying to cross here. Excuse me. Now here we are. Here's the train schedule. Go and get another photograph here. So, one, two, three. If only it cost that much to ride Amtrak. Man, if Amtrak made their trains cost that much to ride now, then, oh man. They would have to make a killing.
they really would make a killing then. So one, two, three. I'm going to have to cross the street again to get pictures of the depot sign in its area. Athens Point A, Union Point 32. So why would this A labeled 32? It's my question. Anyway, part two will continue after this. All right, and part two. So, I'm gonna be heading down towards the bank. I'm gonna get some pictures of that building next if I can. And I like that they have this little park here in the middle. That's nice. Now this trackage here in Winterville was already gone well before the portion in Athens was ripped up. In fact, I'd say it was probably already gone by about 10, maybe 12 years. Because CSX didn't abandon the remaining trackage on this route in Athens until about 1997 and 1998 and after that they really had no more use for the right-of-way and they tore the tracks up and demolished most of the bridges and started demoing the murmur trestle but that was then saved and then torn down fa fairly recently and there's a lamp there that I'm gonna get pictures of and here's the other switch stand right here another Bethlehem switch can't see the date on when it was built because that date's been covered up. There's also a cannon too, so I'll be getting pictures of that. Surprisingly, it looks like the bank is still a bank. It's got a modern door. So one, two, three. Again. All right. There's the church for Winterville, and then there is the bank. Then there's City Hall. And then here's a very tiny street lamp. So, one, two, three. And yeah, I'm going to try and photograph this up close in three parts to get all the details. So, one, two, three on the upper part. Again, for the middle. Again for this section and then another for the black section at the bottom for the base. So it's actually four pictures but you get the point.
Now, if they did a mosaic, you could get the whole thing. Real pretty trees, a lot of real pretty old oak trees here. Oh, there's actually more. There's some green ones there. So these are fairly modern uh, light fixtures, but either way, they're nice. They're pretty. I like that. And don't worry, I'll get to the cannon. And then here is some benches. Now I do want to try and get some benches modeled for um, the town because I have an idea for a little park by the depot that's in it. In fact, I've got drawings I've made of the, uh, the town I want to try and do if I can. But these would probably be a little too difficult to model, but you know what? Who cares? Usually the struggle makes it all the more worth it in the end. But it's not a problem because I've got three different types of benches, ornate, semi-ornate, there, and then typical with the little bars. So, one, two, three. Tell you the truth, it wouldn't be too hard to model this type of bench because all they'd need to do is model one and they can just copy and paste it again. So let me back up and get some more pictures. So one, two, three on one here. And again for this part here. And then again for this side. And then here's this lamp. And here's this. So one, two, three for the base up. from here up and then from here up now basically imagine this but without the screw holding the globe in and you get close now then the cannon that's over here looks to be an older cannon don't know if it's from the Civil War, it might be, or very shortly after. But then again, you never know. <clears throat> I'd imagine there'd be a lot more uh, older trees around here a few years earlier. There's the cannon. Oh, it's a double barrel cannon. <laughs> When did they realize that was not a good idea? My word. <laughs> I swear. When do people... I get that somebody thought making a double barrel cannon was a good idea, but dear God, it didn't end well when they test fired it. Supposedly it killed whoever operated it, so... Yeah. But this looks to be a replica, seeing as there's no real... Yeah, it's got to be a replica. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm not... yeah, it's a replica. But yeah, this is pretty much Winterville, more or less. A town so small that you really, if you blink, you'll miss it. But either way, it's not bad that it's a really tiny town. I like that. It's quiet. That's what I know. I've known about this little town for years. So I'm going to try and get pictures of some of these smaller homes here while I can. So, yeah.
But ah, here's a good example of what I was referring to regarding the little area with the fountain. Because in my drawings of the town, I have an area beside the depot that has a fountain kind of like that, but a bit, more, a bit more ornate. And it has benches around it. It only has four. I only depict that there may be like four in the drawing, but this one has like uh, about five. Well, it's a good example of what I was thinking of. And then here's a really pretty building with a bunch of murals, which I love. I love this one with the birds. And then here we have a very tiny, tiny house. <laughs> it's like a little apartment, more or less. That's the back side, so one, two, three. And I think that building over there was like an old church or an old schoolhouse. I don't remember which. I want to just get a picture of this from the front. Now that, I don't think is a original culvert. I doubt it. Yeah, that is what that is. It's a very tiny house. It's also a little business too. What's this? Oh, it's a little bookstore. So I like that. I like that they made it like a really tiny house. So oh, one, two, three. And that could be modeled without the uh, extended porch. Again, more benches. And this is where part two concludes and part three begins. And here's part two, or excuse me, part three. My brain is not working today. So we have what may have been either an old church or an old school here. Now don't quote me on it because I may not know. And I, in fact, I genuinely don't know. I've never had a chance to really stop and look at, at this town's little historic sites. Mainly because I've been seeing the town enough. I can tell that house is actually the police station, so I'm not going to go bother. So I'm totally, so I'm not exactly going to go and bother them. Oh, so this is the Carter Coyle Doctor's Museum. Fair enough, so that was an old doctor's place, I guess. So, one, two, three. Wonder, are they open? I don't know if they are. When you look at this, it does almost look like a church or a really tiny school almost because they did have one room schoolhouses that were like this small, but you never know. Now, yeah, here's the library, which is in another old house. So, one, two, three. And again, there's the police station, but I'm not going to <laughs> bother them about getting pictures. So yeah, I'll uh, probably, well, I'm not going to end it here actually because I want to walk down the right of way. Who knows, they may have uncovered artifacts that most people wouldn't even recognize regarding the railroad. Honestly, I was surprised to find that railroad spike. I didn't think anything would have been left when they tore the tracks up, but nope, there was plenty left. There was bits of ballast, bits of coal, bits of... Yeah, like again and again, I found a spike. And to be honest, I guarantee you, if you came out here along the right of way with a metal detector, especially in the more remote areas that have not been developed or cleared, you'll still find, um, you'll probably still be able to find bits and pieces of the railroad tracks that they never were able to take up, like spikes, tile plates, small stuff like that, basically. There was where a culvert probably was, right there. <laughs> Dry. Oh well. Hey there. And yeah, this little cut we're coming up to here is where is the portion of the railroad that I walked later. Right. Yeah, but here's the portion of the railroad that I was able to walk here in Winterville. Now they had just cleared this out. Now this was probably like 2017 or so. 
2016 or 2017. As you can see, they've ripped down almost all of the trees that were here. And I actually liked that it was still wooded. It gave it a more rural feel when you were coming into town. And I liked it because it actually gave it a more abandoned look. I would have been fine with the trail. I wish they had kept up more of the tree cover. But that's probably just me being... Looking at it with rose-colored glasses, I guess. I don't know. I'm only 21 and I've already noticed a lot of stuff I grew up seeing over the past 15 years being destroyed or being turned into something that's unrecognizable, you know? But this would have been a single track by this point. There would have probably been the switch that would have probably controlled the uh, siding which would have been a manual switch, would have probably been closer up to the depot. And they probably would have had the switch right around there. And there's two people on bikes about to pass me here, so they would have been heading into the direction the trains would have gone in to uh, Union Point. So the direction, the side of the tracks they would be on now, if it were on an engine, would have been the engineer's side. I'm standing the side I'm standing on now would have been the engineer's side facing towards Winterville. And this side here would have been the conductor's side. And then, when I pan towards Athens, it's vice versa. Engineer is on this side, conductor is on this side. And it would have been the same with the men in the, in the uh, caboose if they had to still ran them. Interesting thing about the Georgia Railroad that you guys probably didn't know, they were one of the last railroads in Georgia to run a mixed train that carried passengers. They ran it up until 1983 with, I think, one or two coaches, and I think the last train actually had rail fans on it, so it sold out almost instantly. And as a result, it was probably the more profitable time the railroad had with that sort of service, but they uh, ended it in 1983 and then they ended up merging with Seaboard a few years later and then from there it became part of CSX and that's the railroad the Georgia Railroad is under today I think is a paper road if I'm not mistaken but yeah here's the cut that we're walking into now and of course the right-of-way has been developed on after this point so it's the path's probably not on the original railroad right-of-way, but regardless, still following the same path. And had the Fools in Athens not have demolished the original Murmur Trestle, you would have then crossed it and a series of other bridges in the more hilly part of Athens, heading to, well, wherever the railroad went after Athens. But if I'm guessing, it would have probably interchanged with what's now the main CSX right-of-way through there and what's now the Athens Line's right-of-way through there. Currently, the Athens Line is doing some track work in downtown Athens to try and get the railroad reopened and strengthened. So that's going to be interesting to see in the coming months and year. But, yeah, the railroad would have continued from Winterville on to Athens, which would have been its next and final stop. Now we're going to go the opposite direction, which would have been the second stop on the railroad, Winterville. And I know I just left, but I'm walking back into town. This is one of the, one of the few things I like about these rail trails, that it gives you a chance to travel the route the trains ran on, and actually give you a chance to look at it a bit more in depth and be able to find artifacts that may have been left behind, not only by the scrapping crews who came in to rip the tracks up but also from the redevelopment crews who came in to build the trail but then again the better ch you, the best chance of finding artifacts from this right of way is going to be on the parts that are so deep in the woods and so undeveloped yet that basically that wouldn't have made sense basically what I'm saying is if you were going to try and find artifacts from the railroad that were left behind after they ripped the tracks up, 
your best bet would be to go along points in the right of way that have not been developed or cleared yet. And your better bet would be to go out with a metal detector and a shovel and just start looking and finding stuff and saving it. Because honestly, I didn't think there was anything left from the actual tracks. Hence why I've said multiple times that I was genuinely surprised to find a railroad spike along the right of way. But then again, there's pictures of the Georgia Railroad having an engine parked in uh, Crawford, probably in the late 60s or early 70s, that shows the tracks in real sad shape, really. But to be honest, I think the tracks, again, were already gone through there and through here well before the 90s ever came into the door, so to speak meaning the tracks were probably removed in the late 70s or mid to late 80s. So they were gone before the final bit of the railroad was ripped up in 1997, 1998. There were actually uh, two websites that actually explained the history of a lot of these railroads including this right-of-way that ran through Athens and the surrounding towns. But they've been gone for about 10 to 15 years now, unfortunately. So, the only way you can find those sites again and the few pictures that remain from them is by going on Internet Archive. That's the best way to find them. But that concludes all of this, so I'll see y'all later. Back again. This is now part four, I think. I don't remember. We're now basically entering in Winterville. Now, if the train had st were still running, it would probably end up pulling into the depot siding and would have stopped. Now, I'm sure back towards the end when, of passenger service, you would have probably only had maybe at least probably one or two cars maybe the ant diesel a baggage car and probably one maybe two passenger cars but even then they wouldn't have been in real good shape they would have probably been showing their age but again you never know there's not a lot of photos of the georgia railroad when they were running in the 80s There's plenty of them in the 60s and 50s, but not in the eight, 70s and 80s, towards the end of the railroad's operating life when it merged into seaboard. I mean, as for why this route was abandoned and torn up, well, the answer is simple. Once you get past Winterville, there's no other towns, no other industries, nothing that would have helped keep the railroad viable or in use in the long term. And really a lot of the route was pretty much identical to the current one that's in use by CSX today. I mean, that's a lot of the times what happens with a lot of these railroads. They all had, anytime a railroad merges with another one, a lot of the uh, duplicate routes would normally be axed or closed or abandoned, whatever term you prefer. Basically what that means is a lot of the duplicate right-of-ways and routes that the other railroad normally used to get into town are usually closed mainly either as a cost-saving measure or simply because they're not viable and would cost money to keep it maintained. I mean really, if I owned a railroad, even I would have to do that. There would be no choice if you held on to every little branch line that or right-of-way like this that had no industries along it for 20 or 30 miles you know it would not be viable and it would end up costing the railroad company money you'd have no choice but to really to ax it and to close it now I mean if you wanted to give it to a short line and have it take over operations then by all means that's what a lot of the class ones have done over the last 20 to 30 years they've 
given routes they intended to close or abandon to short line operators and they've kept the railroads going but even then I don't see that I don't see that happening to this one if it had have been left intact because again right after you get to the outskirts of Winterville which is right up here where these trees are there's really nothing else out here you don't have another town until you reach I think maybe Maxie's I can't remember the next town after Winterville but anyway that's one of the reasons this railroad was closed is mainly that it went through a lot of small towns and a lot of rural areas and a lot of times there was no industry in between to serve the railroad and by then by the time the route closed a lot of the industry had either gone out of business moved overseas or converted over to trucking for all their transportation needs and frankly that is what would end up ended up killing a lot of these railroads was trucking business closures airline you know airlines taking over and companies moving overseas or again closing altogether it's just a multitude of factors really if I tried getting into it here this video would be an hour long it's already four minutes but again mainly to keep a long story short and a simple and a complex answer simple the reason CSX decided to axe and abandon this right-of-way was simply due to the fact that there wasn't enough vi industry to really have it be kept viable more or less basically there was not enough industry on it to justify keeping it in operation and keeping it viable so they decided to close it that and it was probably a duplicate it was pretty much a duplicate route in terms of getting to Union Point because CSX actually already has another right of way that goes into Union Point and goes from there to Athens so it pretty much made this also made this line redundant as far as getting trains through now I know you're going to ask me but what if a short line took over? Now, if a short line had have taken over, they would have been faced with the same problem. For one, if they were going to take it over, they would have to persuade businesses to come in and to use the railroad, and that's not easy, especially now. But at the same time, I even I wouldn't don't see a short line being able again. I wouldn't be, I can't see a short line being able to have kept this going after CSX had have surrendered ownership of it. And that's if that had have been the route they decided to take. But we're now basically on what would have been the single track portion of the railroad. And we're currently go, about to hit one of the grades. where it would have been climbing out of town for a minute or two. And if you don't believe me about the grade, well, let me step off the right-of-way and down into this um, gully here, and you'll understand what I mean, because now the railroad's going to start to climb. Now, I don't know if this is ballast. It very well could be, but you never know. But right here would have been a good place to get a metal detector out right here. You could probably find spikes that got knocked down as they worked on the track. And now look here. This might be coal. Let's see. Let me do a simple test. Yep. That is coal. So even here there's bits of the railroad's remains. Coal and ballast rocks usually what you'll find and maybe on rare occasions rotted ties where there's bits and pieces of wood left but again that's even rare too but if you were going to find spikes you'd have to get a metal detector out but here's the uh, first grade coming out of Winterville it's slight but you can definitely see it looking at it closer and we have an abandoned house too wonderful <laughs> 
And here you can really tell now there may be a culvert under here too. There very well could be a railroad culvert underneath this. I just need to look real quick. If there's a creek, then that means there is one. Let's see here. I can't tell if there's a railroad culvert here, but there may be one. There very well could be one in all this undergrowth, but you can't tell. You can see here where they're doing some kind of logging across the way there. But as you can see, there's a slight grade here. Now, I'm sure if you dug up all the leaves and topsoil that's built up in the 30 or 40 years since this line closed, you will probably find bits and pieces of ballast. In fact, that's probably what that is here, unless that's from the concrete. But then again, I don't know of any railroad that's taken the ballast rock up when they rip the tracks up. That's normally that's usually almost always left behind. But here's zooming ahead towards Union Point. Panning back towards Athens. I'm going to be honest, I don't have a bike. <laughs> if I did, it'd probably be one of the three-wheeled ones where it's got one wheel on the front, two on the back, where you could have a basket or something. I'd probably use that to ride this. Or well, what would be neat and more interesting is getting an old railroad speeder and converting it to ride on this. It technically would be considered a railroad vehicle, but at the same, technically it'd be considered a motor vehicle, but at the same time, it's not as big, it wouldn't be as heavy. I don't know, maybe, that would be neat though to convert one into where you could pedal it to move it, but take a lot of effort, that's for sure. But imagine 35 to 40 years ago before the train stopped running, or maybe even back into the early 70s. And this is uh, what the engineer would see as he came into Winterville from Union Point and all the other little towns along the way. There would have probably been a lot more older houses that would have still been standing and being lived in back then, but it's mostly with the same view. And unfortunately for, I guess, this foot-powered train trip for y'all, this is where the trip will come to an end. It'll come to an end at the Winterville Depot. That'll be this little jaunt's final stop. <laughs> So with that, my narration will conclude and enjoy the remaining few feet into Winterville. On behalf of the Georgia Railroad, we thank you for riding with us. Please come travel with us again anytime soon. <laughs> I was going to say please travel with us again anytime soon, but either way, that works.
<laughs> what I whistled there with my mouth then was what they would normally give for what would have been that crossing coming into Winterville. Two long blasts, one short and one long. That's usually the standard whistle chord for a crossing. Then three chords would be reverse, two would be forward, one would be stop, and five to six would be an emergency. Either that, yeah, no, five would be to let passengers board or no to board before the train leaves, and I think, at least in Breakart Pass, it also means emergency, unless that's maybe that blast, but in a shorter interval with maybe one or two more added on, so six or seven short blasts, but then again, I could be wrong. If y'all want to correct me on this in the comments, please, by all means, do so. Part five will be the conclusion coming into Winterville. The reason I got off the path is because this is where the mainline track would have run if you lined it up where they met, stopped making it curve. Or if you line up before where the path curves around standing would be roughly where the mainline track would have been. So the station siding would have been somewhere right here where they relayed the brick platform. So we have arrived at Winterville. Final stop. On behalf of the Georgia Railroad, we thank you for riding with us. We hope you come back and see us again soon.